Hi, this is Gilles, the radio proper <laughs> at the uh, Call of Arms once again. And uh, today I'm reviewing a, another chameleon antenna. It's a half wave and fed. It is comprised of a uh, impedance transformer attached to a winder and a spool of wire for 40 meters. So it will resonate on 40 meters and lower bands, you know, multiples uh, harmonics. So let's have a closer look. The antenna is basically a uh, plastic winder with the uh, toroid core here in the middle. Everything is coded, so that's, uh, that's a nice touch. I like that. The wire is coded too. You can see here the, the red enamel is, is coming out a little bit here. The coating has, uh, you know, been worn off a little bit. And uh, actually it seems to be coming off really easily, but I don't think that's a problem. This doesn't need to be coded, guys. It doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that you can see here the soldering on the uh, SO, I think it's SO239. <laughs> I don't use the con those connectors, so I'm not quite sure, but... And here on the other end, the ground of the uh, antenna, the antenna connection is crimped, but it's not soldered. From here to here, it's about half an inch. Now, how long would it take to just solder this and then solder the crimped connection here? I know the uh, crimped connection is, is a good connection. It's done professionally and it's well done, but really, I would like to see a soldering of the connection here. And I know they do this for other antennas and I'm, I just disagree with it. I, I think this should be crimped and soldered on top of it. Now you have the uh, usual capacitor here, 100 picofarad I'm assuming, so no problem, high voltage. It's not quite a 49 to 1 because they are I think 15 turns total, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so 15 turns total instead of 14 turns total, so it's not quite a 49 to 1. Now, it doesn't matter one bit. <laughs> that won't make any difference. Here again, the antenna, the wire here, the enameled wire goes to the connection here. It's crimped. Again, this should be soldered as well as crimped. I know 99% of the time it's not going to be a problem, but once, you know, once in a while that crimp is going to move or something and the contact won't be perfect, it should be soldered. Here you have the uh, compensating coil which uh, basically is, uh, makes for a better SWR on uh, the uh, 10 meter band and you know higher bands. Just a few turns of uh, the wire here on a, about an inch diameter forming core. And we have an eyelet with a uh, plastic insulator here at the end. You can wind the wire on this uh, plastic winder which is pretty rugged, pretty strong. But you know what? I would have liked to see a box here. Because if you take, for instance, the uh, Amcom 3 uh, antenna, the toroid is inside a nice plastic box. And here we don't have a box. Not that it's really a problem, but you know what? Chameleon makes, you know, awesome antennas and really rugged antennas and, you know, high price, basically, uh, you know, expensive antennas but they're very good quality. And that's why I would have liked to see a box here. On the other hand, people don't buy chameleon antennas for the low cost. They buy those antennas for quality. And I think it should have been nice to have this turret inside a box. And maybe the antenna would have cost a little bit more, but you know what? It's a chameleon antenna. We know it's expensive. We know it's good quality. So why not go all out and put this in a box? In any case, again, I have no doubt about performance and we're going to set it up right now and test it out. You know what? It, it's getting a little foggy here. <laughs> Usually we see uh, pretty far, but uh, now we have this, uh, this fog uh, coming down. It's cloud, I guess. The guys are busy operating here. You see uh, Eric on the left, uh, Jeremy on the right. <laughs> I did notice a little kink in the wire here. And uh, the insulation actually broke, so it's not broken. The wire isn't broken, but insulation is broken. I installed my uh, spider beam 12 meter mast here with the antenna. 
So it's going to be a sloper because of course it's a half wave on 40 meters, so around 65 foot long and it will go down over there to my operating position. I'm using a BNC adapter because of course I use BNC and I really once again would like to have the option of having a BNC connector on chameleon antennas. Here is a sweep of the hall of HF and we see the dips here exactly where we want them with of course the best SWR on the 40 meter band almost one to one probably 1.1 to one then we see one on 20 meters 15 meters and 10 meters so very good uh, very good sweep here uh, great SWR it's very flat on the uh, whole 40 meter band, especially at the bottom of the band. And that's very nice to see. Very good on 20 meters. It goes up to uh, 1.5 to 1. So again, a very good SWR on the 20 meter band. I forgot to check 15 meters, but uh, 10 meters is pretty good as well. So I have uh, three 18650 cells here with my MPPT solar charger and uh, the uh, QRP Labs QDX. So that's on 20, 30, 40 and 80 meters. Of course, I'm only going to be using it probably on 20 and 40 meters today. And uh, I have my uh, Mac, uh, MacBook Air M1. And that's it. I mean, that's the whole setup. Uh, and what I like about the QDX is that you only have a cable that goes to the computer, USB cable, power, an antenna, and nothing else. And that's all you need to operate is the computer, the radio, a battery, and that's it. So I'm looking at uh, 40 meters first, and I see stations popping up uh, right away, which is always a good sign. And uh, I'm actually looking at the uh, level and uh, it's higher than on my magnetic loop, so very good. On 20 meters, uh, I don't see any stations and it's bizarre that I, uh, I see those black bands here on the waterfall where there is apparently no noise and that's, that's something that I have to check out, that's just not normal. I only saw a couple of people on 40 meters so far, uh, a German guy and a French one. And, uh, well, I don't know, maybe propagation isn't that great today, but uh, uh, anyway, the antenna is an unfed half wave. And there is absolutely no doubt that the performance of unfed half waves is absolutely awesome. It's my favorite antenna. That's what I use all the time. So. This one is no different, once again. Uh, performance is gonna be stellar. That there is, I have no doubt about that. The only thing that I'm, you know, I have mixed feelings about this antenna because I think honestly that it's not up to the level of quality that uh, Chameleon has accustomed me uh, to. And I think they could have done it a little bit better with maybe a, uh, you know, a better winder with a box and also uh, soldered connections and a better insulation you know better wire uh, insulation wire insulation quality basically because a friend of mine had the same problem and uh, had a little kink in the wire and bing the uh, insulation uh, was uh, basically uh, broken so that's not very good especially that this antenna is brand new so chameleon carl you can do a little bit better on this one. <laughs> I love your stuff, but uh, this one is not up to par. Um, it's just missing a little bit of attention to detail that usually you get with chameleon antennas, which so far have been absolutely uh, you know, flawless. This one, not quite. Eric here, um, who's visiting from the uh, Paris region, has found a very interesting mosque from China. It's the uh, XB3025A-1 and uh, it actually has a base and magnets. So you can actually stick it on the base like this, very interesting. And you can also stick it, say, on a pad and then you have your key and you can operate. So 
it's uh, it's pretty darn cool. So uh, yeah, how much did you pay for that, Eric? Combien t'as payé? 128 euros. 128 euros. So yeah, that's pretty. Uh, well, that's pretty cheap. I mean, and the quality seems to be pretty good. The other one that he has is a solid state, solid state CW paddle. It's uh, actually made by 9A5N in Croatia and it's a very heavy base. There's a battery inside and an electronic circuit and uh, the paddles actually, the finger paddles actually don't move. <laughs> but it works, so go figure. That would be a very nice uh, desk paddle actually. Right, so I did make contact. <laughs> to the French station F5 IQR, IQR uh, portable in Perpignan using a lithium battery with an FT897 uh, computer on his lap and uh, sitting on a bench and fed half wave uh, 6.3 meters long so that's actually not an half wave hand fed it's a random wire strung between two platan trees <laughs> and his antenna is uh, at about a meter fifty from the ground so maybe five feet from the ground he says people passing by don't see anything abnormal <laughs> so i'm saying uh here north of nice altitude 970 meters qdx four watts antenna and fed half wave qth call de vence 12 meter mast and fed half wave of 20 meters. Thank you, Jean. Uh, operator Gilles. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> it's it's getting pretty cold here, and uh, I did make uh, my contact with uh, a French guy. So, local contact NVIS uh, for sure. You can certainly build one yourself for much less, but it's still a good choice if you don't want to do that, and not everyone wants to build antennas. I'm still on the fence about it because there are some, some details that, you know, kind of bug me. But it's an unfed half wave and it's, the performance is absolutely awesome. And that's all I have for, for today. Have a good one.